Hi everyone, welcome to my floss tube. My name is Amy. I go by Fiber Arts Amy here and on Instagram, and it's been a while. <laughs> I think this is floss tube number 29. I am filming on my bed. My kids are home from break. There's stuff going on in the house. Um, so you might wobble a little just because you're propped on my bed. Um, but ooh, see, you're wobbling a little bit, but hopefully it'll be okay. Um, I'm just happy to be back. Welcome to my floss tube. Um, this is my channel about mostly cross stitching. I also do quilting videos. I'm saying all of this for those of you who may be visiting here or new here and don't already know these things about me. Um, I also have started a hand dye fabric company called Oak Crown Studios and um, I'll do a small update about that near the end. Um, and I have some whips on some of my fabrics so I'll try to remember to mention that. You guys know if you've seen me you know I'm bad at mentioning my fabrics and things. If you have any questions though just ask them down below. Um, life has just been busy. I filmed in early October right when I got back from the Queen City Stitch Retreat. Um, in case you see this in the next few days sign ups for the 2024 Queen City Stitch Retreat start January 1st at 10 a.m. Um, and we will be sending out um, a link to do that registration. We're running it the same way as last year. Everyone who signs up in the first 24 hours um, is entered into a lottery to, to register. Um, so you don't need to like be the first there or have the fastest internet connection. But if uh, you wanna have the best chance at a spot, you do wanna sign up in the first 24 hours. Um, our special guest, our artist for 2024 is Autumn Lane Stitchery, which we are very excited about. Um, we will be doing Marabilia again in the future, um, but this year we're going to do Autumn Lane Stitchery and mix it up a little bit. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that because I know not everyone's interested, but if you have any questions, um, you can leave comments below. Um, also you can, um, DMing me on Instagram is really one of the fastest ways to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. So I can't guarantee I'm going to show you everything I worked on. Um, since I saw you last, but I'm gonna do my best and at least do most of it. Um, I haven't gotten a lot of stitching done <laughs> in the last few months um, or last two and a half months. Um, life has been jam-packed and very busy. I've had some other things going on in my life that needed to take more of my attention. Um, and then also I started a business. <laughs> So um, dying is not going to take over my life. I'm still going to make sure I find time for stitching, but I'm definitely in that phase where um, I'm having to work on finding that balance for myself, and I haven't found it yet. Um, it might always be a process of trying to fine tune and get to it, um, especially as uh, I get busier with Oak Crown Studios, which I will hopefully over time. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna show you what I've been stitching on. Um, first thing I'm gonna show you is, oh, I don't even have my iPads dead, so I don't even have a picture for you. You'll be able to tell. You'll be able to see it well enough from what I've stitched. Um, so I stitch most weeks, although we had a break there for a while because things were so busy, but most weeks I stitch with um, Lisa, who is Crossed by Floss, um, and we work on a project together. So we've been working on Garden Beauty from Marabilia and I love it. I love it so much. Um, now I jump around a lot when I stitch. Some of you I'm sure already are aware of that. My dog is coming. She hears floss tube voice. Okay, lay down, lay down, lay down. What? No, you lay down, you lay down. Come on, go right up on dad's pillows and take a nap. Um, Oh, so I jump around a lot when I stitch. So the stuff at the top isn't completely done, but it's pretty close. Um, and this week while I was stitching with Lisa, I worked on filling in parts of her dress because I have like the outlines of it, but it's not filled in. So I was working on that a lot, but I love her. I'm really looking forward to getting her done, hopefully sooner rather than later. I'm gonna have to put, I have this huge, you can't see it. This is another good reason to film up here because I have a ton of space to just pile. <laughs> Cause I don't have like a desk or anything. So I have all of these project bags just like piled on the bed. 
and I need to hope for the best in terms of them not falling over. Um, so next I'm going to show you my temperature Quaker. So I, I got this pattern. This is from Stitch and Mommy, um, Sarah. She has an Etsy store. I will try to remember to link her below. So she does temperature patterns and not, I don't press things. I'm, I'm very either lazy or low maintenance, depending how you look at it. Um, so I have not pressed this, so it's going to curl a lot, but, um, this is Sarah's pattern. This is her temperature Quaker pattern, which you can get in her Etsy store. I have never done a temperature pattern before, and I have to say I have loved this. Now, I'm not planning on doing one this coming year. Um, my stitching time is um, narrow enough that I don't see it being something I want to do consistently, but I really loved this pattern a lot. And I'd never done a Quaker before, and I'd never done a temperature pattern before. So um, I took this year to do it and I love it. So all of the big motifs are done. I have threads hanging everywhere because that's how I kind of handle things or how I've handled things with this pattern. Um, December is just filling in all of these smaller, like the letters and the smaller motifs. Like there's a bird there, there's a few others scattered throughout. So that's all I have left to do. This is caught up as of like a week, a week and a half ago or so. So my intention is to finish this this Sunday on New Year's Eve. That's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to catch up with it over the next day or two and then hopefully finish it up on Sunday once I know what the high temperature for the day is. And I'm really excited about that. I love it. I just think it looks great. Uh, I should mention these are not Sarah's colors. These are my colors. My kids picked colors for me. We went to Michael's and these are... Um, anchor spools and they just picked out the spools that they wanted me to use. I told them to get me a rainbow with 19 colors or whatever it is and that's what I'm using. I really enjoyed it. I would thoroughly recommend Sarah's patterns to anyone. I think they're great. <sighs> okay, what's next? So I did get on quite a Teresa Wensler kick really for the last like month or so I've just been like I've been um maybe because I don't have a ton of stitching time right now so I know I'm not going to be able to like just pull out a whip and like power through it and get it done that's not going to happen I'm not going to pull out a marabilia and see an enormous amount of progress you know really fast it's just not that's not what's happening right now um, so I've kind of been just enjoying more of those like really slow intentional stitches like Teresa Wensler's where Lord knows when it's going to get done, but, um, it's really enjoyable to do. I don't, haven't been doing it while my kids have been home, but, um, uh, up until Christmas break started, winter break started, I was. So this is actually a whip. Um, I already had the chart. Um, this is Teresa Wensler's spring carousel horse. Um, sorry about the glare. She's so beautiful. So this is a piece that I actually bought, um, mostly stitched, I don't know, maybe on eBay or something. Um, and I am going through and working on finishing it. Still have a needle, needles and threads still around. But this is her carousel horse. So I, this was ridiculous. They, when I bought this, I was unaware that they had glued it to like poster board. And I don't know if they'd used like a spray basting kind of chemical or what, but um, it was a mess and it didn't come off. Like I washed the crud out of this thing. You can still feel a little bit of the residue on the back. Please don't glue your, you can do what you want. I've said this before and then I'm like, Amy, don't tell people what to do with their stitching. It's their stitching. They can do whatever they want with it. If they want to glue it, they can glue it. And then I'm like, but please don't glue it. <laughs> it's just so hard to undo. Um, anyway, I started back stitching this. Um, there, oh, that's really blown out. So there are places where, oh my goodness, to not blow out. Um, there are places, especially along the border, where I need to do stitching, but there's a lot of back stitching that needs to be done. And I just, so I back stitched this, um, the girth of the saddle the other night, 
And it looks so, like before I backstitched it, it just looked like blobs. Like you couldn't tell the structure or anything. And now it looks so good. It looks like a girth. I just, I love it. The backstitching, I don't mind backstitching, thankfully. I know some people hate it. I enjoy it. Um, when I'm in the mood for backstitching, I can pull this out. So, for example, I'll have to look to be sure. I think this is the only corner. <clears throat> Sorry, it's blowing it out. There's stitching in here. So, Teresa Wensler is full of fractionals. Um, this is the only corner that I think is done. Although, as I'm backstitching, I might find some stitches that still need to be done. I did that in the tail. I, I stopped with one of the colors I was using for backstitching temporarily because I realized I found a missing stitch. Um, but I think the stitching in this corner is done. This corner, I think it's all done except for the fill-in up here. And then there's a lot more work. If I can see what's happening. There's a lot more work that needs to happen in this corner and this corner. But um, I'm going to have a fully stitched Teresa Wensler at some point that I didn't do most of the stitching on. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Also, I just want to point out for all of you naysayers, and you might know I'm mostly a linen stitcher. My preferred fabric by far is linen or like I love a Monaco. I don't think Monaco is being made anymore, but there's like, I like fully natural, all natural materials. So 100% cotton, 100% linen. I love it. Um, but just for everyone who thinks it can't be done, or for those of you who wonder if it can be done, this is a beautiful Teresa Wensler stitched on Ada. You can absolutely do it. You just pierce the, the Ada square, um, which some people hate doing. I don't know. I've done it before. It's, it's slightly more annoying than doing it on linen, but it doesn't stop you. Like you can totally do this. So anyway, if you're a linen stitcher, Please know that you too can stitch Teresa Wensler if you want to. You don't have to because she's not everybody's cup of tea. But I love her stuff. So that's been kind of just a fun low maintenance thing to pull out if I feel like doing a little back stitching. All right, this is stitching adjacent. This is a needle point kit. So Elsa Williams also designed a lot of cross stitch kits and I love her cross stitch kits. Um, I actually bought this one without reading the description properly. Um, and now I, and now I know too, like you can, a lot of things get listed as cross stitch that aren't cross stitch and this was not cross stitch. It's needle point. Um, but I was like, eh, what the heck? I'm going to give it a try anyway. It wasn't expensive. It's one of these printed canvases, which you're going to see right through. I've only done a little bit, but it was fun to pull out and get started. I've just done some stitching there and there, and I don't know. I'll pull it out when I'm in the mood for it. It is a kit. It came with all of this wool. So much wool. I just found a needle minder that <laughs> I didn't know was in the bag. I think it came with the bag. Um, but anyway. There's all my, my wool. It's just fun for a change. Fun for a change to work on. It is kind of tough to see, like, to distinguish the colors. Um, but there's a chart that comes with it that helps a lot with that. So That'll keep getting slow progress, I'm sure. Um, I have been working on... Um, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have a cover photo for you. But this is Bella Rose from Nora Corbett. This is one of her smaller designs. Um, this is sold as a set with uh, Bella Rose and Bella Hydrangea and they're just like the, the heads and they're full coverage but instead of stitching mine as full coverage I'm doing, I'm stitching it on this light blue kind of smoky blue fabric um, instead of filling in the background with a blue color. Um, so I made a little more progress on her. Her face is going to be right there. And I was just talking um, here recently to Lisa, Crossed by Floss, and she had an idea, which I'm totally stealing, but giving her credit. Um, she does Mirabilia Mondays. She started Mira Mondays, and I joined in on that 
as soon as I found out about it. Now here in the last like six months, it's gone a bit by the wayside between the retreat and, uh, you know, starting a business and all that stuff. I'm just not doing as much stitching. But she does Mirror Monday stitching and I used to do it all the time where you just pull out any Mirabilia or Nora Corbett you want to on Mondays and put some stitches in. Well, I was talking to her and she was suggesting the idea of, or brought up the idea of making it the same Mira every Monday. So last year she did a thing where she did the same Mira every Monday for a month of Mondays to get like some more consistent project progress on one project. And she brought up the idea of maybe doing that this coming year and just working on the same one until it was done. And I love the idea. Love it. Um, and I have three contenders I was telling her about. None of which I have here to show you because that would make way too much sense for me to be prepared to show you the projects I'm talking about. But maybe next time which hopefully won't be two and a half months again. I'm hoping to do this more regularly. Anyway, my Titania, my Fairy Moon, and my Damask Roses. Oh, see, I wasn't, so those three and red, red also. Those are contenders. Those are all contenders for doing that. But then I also thought when I was prepping for this video, even though this is tiny, Maybe I should do this first because this has been languishing. I just want to turn it into like a pin pillow. It has been languishing for a while. I was hoping to get it done before the Mirabilia retreat and turn it into a pin pillow. For those of you who went, you may know, or if you've seen my other videos, that uh, I ended up finishing Royal Holiday's head, like head and cowl. And, um, I turned that into a pin pillow that we, that's where we put the pins for people to use to pin the brag tag, brag table tags, like ID tags to their pieces if they weren't framed. Um, I was originally going to do this for that. Um, anyway, maybe I should make this the first one and kind of get a finish early in the year to get off to like a good start and then pull out one of the bigger Mirabilia's. I'm leaning towards Titania or Damask Roses. Titania needs to get done because it's on black. And I don't know how long my eyes are going to last. Um, but it would be more fun to do Damask Roses. Maybe I should do Bella Rose, then finish Damask Roses, then dive into Titania after I feel like I've already had some success with this process. I don't know. What do you guys think? If you have an opinion let me know I love hearing what you guys think please feel free to comment comment down below don't want my backs to fall okay there's gonna be more Teresa Wensler scattered in here so this is a kit that I got so some people didn't realize that she has minis um, I've gotten a lot of comments about that. So she has several mini designs that she's done. Um, one of her sets of four designs, is it just four, is it more than that? Anyway, Fantasy, Fantasy Collection Volume 2, I believe, has four mini designs in it. Um, this, is this one of them that's in that? There's a unicorn, a pegasus, a, mm, there's a mini peacock in this one. Is that right? Anyway, this is called Castle Ridge. Yes, this is called Castle Ridge. Um, and this is actually my travel project. <laughs> uh, I think most people pick simpler designs. I don't get to, I don't actually end up stitching in my car very much. It's not a thing that happens a lot. And I'm finding that when I am stitching in my car, this is fine. I can do it. Um, my daughter saw this the other day and was like, oh, you need to finish that soon. She fell in love. Um, but I'm also doing it on this blue fabric. So I'm not planning on stitching like the cloud things. I may add them later, but I just have part of the castle done. Part of the tower at the top. It's slow going. You know, I get a few stitches in here and there. It'll get done eventually. I gotta remember to take that back to my purse. There's the 
there's so much here. You would laugh if you could see what's off camera. My bad. There's also wool everywhere because I've been spinning. And yeah, cool. Okay, so this is a project I would love to finish in my lifetime. But this is definitely a lifetime project. This is from a kit from Letty Stitch. What's it called? Holiday at Seaside. It's stunning. And I believe it's also sold as like three separate kits, I think. Um, or at least there's portions of this that are sold, you know, as individual kits. This is enormous. I don't know if I have anything that says the stitch count that's handy. This kit is crazy. It's so huge. Let me see. page one. It's 590 stitches wide and about 200 tall. It's huge. Let me put these away so I don't lose them. Like this is the, like look at this. There's so much that came in this kit. There's like these two packets. There's one in color and one black and white. Oh, one of them's bigger. Like so one of them, the is like blown up like there's two copies of the chart one is blown up bigger than the other it's got some beads and <laughs> floss <laughs> so many blue I just it's beautiful um I know it's Christmassy but it also I would leave it up all winter long probably honestly if I ever finish it it's gonna be left up all the time because I'm gonna be so proud of myself Um, I have a pathetic start. Truly pathetic. Ta-da. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and this is on that, um, this is Ada that came with a kit and it has the grid lines that I'm assuming are going to wash out. Um, tiny start. But I bought this last winter. It didn't get it started and I just, I really want it started. So I haven't had much time, but I wanted to get it going so I could say it started it's a whip and start enjoying it hopefully I'll get some more stitches in on that this winter okay what else Cinderella this is Mirabilia Cinderella I'm gonna take it out of the I don't want to take it out of the uh, I'm not gonna take that because there's not that much done <laughs> Um, so I really wanted to stitch my Cinderella on, um, a dark fabric. So, and all, you're, so obviously I'm a fabric dyer now and I'm dyeing my own fabrics, but I have a million whips on other people's fabrics. So you're still going to be seeing all of those. Um, this is a picture of this plus. Gothic or phantom, I believe. I don't remember which one. But anyway, so this is the border um, up in the corner. Is, oh, do I have I have the picture. I don't know why I'm describing it to you when I have the picture. This is from a kit. So I've done, I started with just a little bit of her dress, and then I worked up, and I'm trying to get started on that border. So there's the brown of the outer border. Is that the outer border or the inner border? I don't know. What a, outer border. It's got to be outer border. Um... It does show up much better in real life, and the border is really thick. I know the brown is very dark, so it it's hard to see on the fabric, especially in the video there. But I think it's going to look fine once I add in the lighter shades and the flowers and greenery on the border. Um, I've seen Cinderella stitched on a dark fabric and loved it. And my mother has stitched it on a light fabric, and it's beautiful. But that might end up in my house one day, and I still really want to stitch it. So dark fabric seems like a good idea to make it different. This is um, part of her dress in greenery by the castle and the tips of the it's part of the towers in the castle. Um, and this is a clay by Kim Needleminder. It's funny how things look different in like the light and on the camera. Like the gold is really showing up yellow in the camera, but like in real life, it's not so in your face. Anyway, the reason I'm not taking out the Q-snap is because I might be stitching on that tonight. So I don't want to, I'm 
just lazy. I don't want to take it out of the Q-snap and then have to get it positioned back in the Q-snap. And I know it's a bad idea to leave it on a Q-snap for a long period of time, but do as I say, not as I do. Um, this next one, or two, so this is Rogue Dragon from um, Nora Corbett. So Nora Corbett, who's the Marabilia designer, she has a Patreon, which is wonderful. Um, I strongly recommend people go um, sign up for it if they're fans of her designs. Um, the first design she put out was Rogue Dragon. So, and I don't have like a cover photo for you um, because the patterns she puts out on Patreon haven't been model stitched yet. Um, I am not the first person to stitch on this though. There are people out there who have finished theirs. Um, but I've been working on this quite a bit lately and making a lot of progress and really loving it. So Rogue Dragon. Also in here is another new start. Um, I've been meaning to stitch this for like 20 years and I finally got it started. Um, Celestial Dragon. Oh, sorry. Celestial Dragon from Teresa Wensler. I love this so much. And I think as Teresa Wensler's go, well, I, so I love like the borders and like the repeating elements and like the geometric, I, I just love it. Even though it's very intricate and time consuming, I really enjoy it. Um, so I think this is gonna be pretty relaxing <laughs> stitch. I have very little done. You may even laugh at me and that's fine. And this is on Monaco, it's on like antique white Monaco. That's all I've gotten done. <laughs> oh, sorry. But it's a start. And I'm really enjoying it. There was a reason I started this. And I can't even remember what it was. Like something wasn't going well. And I just needed to put it away. And do something different. Anyway. I started this. And I'm glad I did. Because now it'll be easier to pull it out. And keep working on it whenever I want. Oh, good Lord. What's next? I feel like such a goofball right now. <coughs> okay, Maggie, Kitchy Whips, if you're listening, everything's fine. Don't kill me. So we just went to our cabin for uh, the holiday and I packed... So Maggie, Maggie, AKA Kitchy Whips, right? She gave me this whip of hers. Um, she's not gonna finish it on this fabric. So she gave, she asked me if I wanted it or I just begged her for it. I don't remember because I love adopting whips. And um, ah, it's, oh my God, what's the name of it? I always wanna say Evangeline and it's not Evangeline. It's um, Princess Eliana, Eliana. I don't have that upside down, do I? I don't think I do. Anyway, so I think this is on the called for fabric. Maggie doesn't want to continue it like this, so she gave it to me. And I have my kit for this. I hadn't started it yet, but I had fabric picked and whatnot. I had my kit for this at the cabin. And so I packed this to go with me, right? Because I thought maybe I would get it started at the cabin or, you know, continue what Maggie has started while we were at the cabin. And I got to the cabin and I was like, oh my God, I don't know where it is. I was like, did I lose Maggie's stitching? Maggie is going to flip and kill me and I'm going to deserve it, right? If I lost her stitching, even though she doesn't want it back, it doesn't matter, right? It's the principle of thing. You don't lose someone's stitching. I couldn't find it. And I was like, oh my God, Scott, my husband, like, what have I done? <laughs> it's got to be here somewhere. <laughs> where did Maggie's stitching go? I can't find it. I can't find it. And I distinctly remembered putting it somewhere safe. I had put it in one place when we were packing up and then I was like, ooh, I'm a little worried it might fall out or something might happen to it. I need to put it someplace safer than that. And I knew I'd gone through that thought process, but I couldn't remember where that safe place was. I just found it. It legit <laughs> was tucked in the project bag like it was in there and zipped this is a um jasmine custom bag bag 
I am such a goofball. I looked everywhere for this dang thing, but not in the front pocket. Maggie, I'm sorry for thinking, even getting to the point where I thought I had lost your stitching. That was inexcusable of me. My apologies. Moving on. Okay, there, I gotta find a good picture of this. So I started, so there's some things I can't show you that I finished. I finished um, a box, well, I can show you the picture of it. I stitched the top of this for my mother-in-law and I finished it into a Lone Elm Lane box. Um, I have pictures of that on Instagram if you wanna go check it out. I'm also Fiber Arts Amy on Instagram. Um, I still have this kind of kitted up because I'd like to stitch it for myself to, as, as, and do it this way, like it's the big drum. Um, but anyway, so I finished this. Um, I also finished, um, if you've been following me, I was making an apple butter block, the apple butter block from Farms of Hawk Run Hollow. I was stitching for my husband's aunt. I finished that and gifted it, that to her. So that's done. Um, but since I finished that box lid for my mother-in-law for this year, I'm starting on a gift for her for next year. And here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Um, Pages and Stitches, Kelly, um, got me to go check out just because she loves them. I went to look at the Cooler Design Studio website and they have a lot of really great patterns. Include A lot of their stuff is like very 80s. Like, look at this. Look at that stock. Um, but, um, but wonderful. And I actually love some of their stockings and also watching Kelly do a stocking made me determined to do some stockings in my life. Um, we don't need them. My kids already have stockings, but I just want to stitch some more. Anyway, part of what's great about doing this as a gift for my mother-in-law is that this is mostly blank fabric, very quick and easy. And I'm doing it with one strand over two so that I can use the sewing method. I'm not real worried. It's on 32 count fabric. It'll end up being a good size, but she's a grown up, so I'm not really worried about like making sure it's big enough to fit toys in and stuff. Um, but I got this started because I, you know, I finished, I had to finish the gift stitching in November because we meet up with my mother in law on thanks, usually at Thanksgiving time to exchange gifts. So I needed to have her gift and my husband's aunt's gift done by then. So we met up and exchanged gifts, but then it was still like, December, right? And I was in the mood for some, some stocking and some Christmas stitching. So I decided to get started on this. So my idea, because as far as I know, my mother-in-law does not have a stocking. I've never seen her put one up. My husband remembers having like store-bought stockings or whatever as a kid. I think my mother-in-law would really appreciate this. So my idea is to do the stocking for my mother-in-law and my husband and I have plans of um, putting hooks up at our cabin for stockings. Um, just to explain, so like this year, we actually celebrate Yule. So we open presents on Yule here at home, and then we don't always go to the cabin for Christmas, but this year we happen to go to the cabin for Christmas. And when we do that, we usually take the stockings with us, and the kids will open their stockings on Christmas. So they have like something to open then. Um, anyway, we figured out this year where we want to put hooks to hang stockings at the cabin so they're not just sitting in a box on the counter. My idea is that next Thanksgiving, or leading up to Thanksgiving, whenever we meet my mother-in-law, we should hang up everyone's stockings and include my mother-in-law's with it. Um, so she'll have her own stocking with her name on it and we can put her gifts in it and it'll be so cute. And then my husband's aunt the other day just messaged me to say that she had um, an old chenille bedspread that belonged to my husband's grandmother, to my mother-in-law's mother. And the way the conversation went, I get the impression that this chenille bedspread might not be in good shape. It might be a cutter kind of situation where you would want to cut it up. Okay, sorry guys, iPhone storage situation. Um, hopefully... I'll pick up okay. I'll be able to edit this together well and it'll pick up okay where I was. Anyway, uh, my husband's aunt was saying that this quilt, or the, the, our conversation led me to believe that this quilt, my art quilt, oh my goodness, 
chenille bud spread might need to be cut up to use for projects instead of being used as a full thing. So I'm gonna use that on the back of the stocking if it is appropriate to cut up. And um, I think my mother-in-law is gonna love it to have part of her mom's bed spread on the stocking. And the stocking, it's very 80s, it's very her style. I think it'll fit in great in her house. So anyway, I got started and I'm having a blast, honestly, <laughs> working on this so far. It's fun. I just got some stuff done up by the top. It's just quick and relaxing and very low maintenance stitching. So, and I've already started and as long as I work on it, it shouldn't be a problem getting it done for um, next Thanksgiving, especially when that's mostly like open fabric showing through. That was, that was fun. That was a, like when I was in the mood to do something Christmassy. It was nice to work on that. I feel like I lost my groove. I may not have looked like I had any groove. <laughs> but it feels like I lost my groove a little bit. Um, when my phone decided to tell me I didn't have enough room. Um, I don't have a picture to show this, to show you of this. But this is my pineapple from Chatelaine. And it hasn't come out for a while. And I took it out this week for Chatelaine Wednesday. And I have to say, was in love. I was having so much fun stitching on this. Um, I think I get too, like, wrapped up in my head about Chatelaine's. Like, I hadn't started, right, because, like, with Marabilia's, there's an order in which I do things. I do all the DMC and or Silk. In all the cross stitching and then I do all the metallics because if you do the metallics before you do the DMC or silk you're gonna rough up your DMC or silk as you drag across those metallic stitches so metallics usually go in last but before beading or after the you know DMC and silk but before the beading I'm like used to this order of doing things but there's so much metallic in here that I was like okay but like I I, I kind of like there's a lot of it like I you know need to get that done or would like to get that done to anchor some of my other stitches I finally just got over myself <laughs> and just started stitching what I want to do um so I put in some metallic this is um rainbow gallery petite treasure braid um this in here is a uh sorry it's not quite focusing as much as I want it to um silk lame braid is that lighter green the border on the left and the right are the same and then as each other and top and the bottom are the same as each other but top and bottom is not the same as left and right in case you're looking at it thinking something's not working here um you would be right um I just I had a blast doing this this week and so and I have Egypt Mandala Garden going that has just been beyond me to work on lately I, there's just been too much other stuff going on and I can't work on that in between like dying and shipping and life dealing with life situations so I will get back to it but I'm not there right now um but anyway I'm hoping this pineapple is going to come out more often because I'm really enjoying it okay next um all right this is not a whip yet but um it's going to be soon <laughs> I was getting organized um this bag, if you can hear noise in the background, it's because one of my sons just came home and so people are talking. But if I've been waiting for a long time to find like a good time to film and it's not happening. So today's a bad time to film and I'm filming anyway. This bag was a gift to me from Kelly of Pages and Stitches. Um, she gifted this to me at the Marabilia Retreat in October and I love it. And look, look, look. Look at how beautiful this is. Her... I want to say scissor fob. It's not a scissor fob. It's a zipper pull with a little mushroom. It's so perfect. I love it. So Kelly, on one of her recent videos, and just for the record, I am way behind on floss tube. I don't know what anyone's stitching or what they've been doing. I just don't have time to watch floss tube. <laughs> Hopefully things will settle down now that the holidays are over. But I, I say that, but we've got people registering for a retreat in a few days. And I'm going to be working my butt off grabbing attendees and stuff. So I don't know what I'm thinking. Things are going to slow down. Kelly, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. In one of her videos at some point, <laughs> sort of recently, one of her 2023 videos, showed this pattern that she got from the Cooler Design Studio website. And it does say Cooler Design Studio on here. So she bought the pattern and she was talking about fabrics. She asked, I think she had a green and a lavender and was asking what people thought she should stitch it on. It has all this beautiful like white work borders. I don't think there's any cutting. Like it's not harding or anything. Those are just like back stitches or long stitches to make all that like lacy effect. So I saw Kelly, and I don't think I've talked to Kelly about this, but I saw her show this and I was like, I have that kit. I know I have that kit. It's been in my stash for a really long time. I'm just folding it. It doesn't, I could get it in here straight. It's a really nice big bag, but I'm folding it. So I grabbed the kit the other day, the other day, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. I organized my floss. Look at that, Kelly. And here's what I think I'm gonna stitch it on. Which y'all might think is very weird. This is what I think I'm gonna stitch it on. So um, this is a one-off fabric that I did for um, my fabric company for um, Oak Crown Studios. I'm considering adding it to my regular line. If you think I should, let me know. Stuff like that, I have, a, right, I have a million ideas for my company, but only so many hours in a day, and I have children to take care of too. Um, but I'm thinking about doing this, so this is dyed on Lugana. Um, if I dyed it on Linen or Ada, it would be darker. But um, the way it turned out, I kind of am loving the idea of, Mob as I'm trying to juggle this, of stitching this on it. I don't know. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it and see how it looks. I think it's still gonna show up really well. There's a light blue to all of it, like even that center part that might be reading white. There's um, still some bluish to it, but I think it'll show up well. Like here's, and this is like a creamy white. It's not a white white. I don't know, is it like 3865 or something? It should say right here, I should just tell you. Oh no, they don't give the numbers. It just says ivory. But I think that's gonna show up and look nice. Anyway, I'm gonna try it instead of using the kit fabric. Let's see how it goes. And Kelly, you didn't know I was gonna stitch this with you, but I'm stitching this with you. And I might add this fabric to my website. We'll see. I would have to dye some more of it. Um, so, some of you might realize right away seeing that fabric what was happening when I dyed it. Um, so Oak Crown Studios, I have a Fabric of the Month Club. It's just started because my company is really new. And um, I wanted my first month's fabric in particular to be amazing. Like just knock your socks off incredible. And um, also on my own personal like to-do list, had been um, dyeing a fabric for Lavender and Lace's Firefly Fairies. I'm sorry, I do not have a picture to show you. But um, I will try to rectify that for my next, hopefully next video, my iPad won't be dead and I'll have a photo to show you. Um, the reason I, I have the chart with a photo, but I don't keep those in my project bags. I keep the working copy in my project bags. So that's why I don't have a photo on hand. Um, so for the Firefly Fairies chart, Marilyn Levitt Emblem, the designer, gave instructions for how to bleach a standard fabric to get like a, a lighter kind of starburst effect in the middle. And I hate that idea <laughs> for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the possibility of ruining a fabric. <laughs> of course, she was doing this to a standard fabric. Bleach obviously is gonna weaken the fibers and just makes the, the part of me that thinks that my cross stitch is gonna live on for thousands of years and end up in museums one day, that part of me hurts to think about bleaching <laughs> part of the fabric and you know damaging the fibers so they won't last as long. Um, so, and I didn't, even to like to bleach a fabric, um, she was doing this back before hand dyed fabrics were like much of a thing 
and I didn't want to just bleach a standard fabric. I don't know. It took me forever. I, I kind of had it on my to-do list of like, I need, just need to dye a fabric for myself to stitch Firefly Fairies long before I decided to start the Hand Dyed Fabric Company. And then once I did, I was like, well, that's going to be my first fabric of the month. So I know some of you have already seen this. This is, um, I called it Firefly. This is the fabric that I dyed for Firefly Fairies. Now that does you can stitch anything you want on this. I think there's a million things that would look amazing on this fabric, especially, I mean, what most comes to mind is Halloween designs and fancy ladies. And I think the fabric kind of exudes like a nighttime kind of thing. So I was, I wasn't trying to like, I'm not trying to do like a whole sales pitch here in the middle, but it's like what I do now. So my apologies if I'm sounding annoying or like, I'm just trying to sell you something. I'm just trying to explain my reasoning. I'm not trying to make any of y'all spend money. I'm like the worst business person ever. <laughs> anyway, um, so Firefly Fairies, I this is what I wanted to stitch them on. And so I, I did some experimenting to come up with what I wanted. And so the one I just showed you that I'm going to do the Cooler Design Studio piece on was like a first iteration of like, how, how can I even do this? Like trying to figure out logistically how to get that like lighter area in the middle. So anyway, in in person, it's this isn't quite as blotchy. It's a more softly modeled, blend like more blended than the like harsh kind of jumps you see here. Um, but I've started each of the fairies, and I love I love how it's gonna look. I think it's gonna be amazing. And you know, I didn't. The thing that kept me from starting this for like the last twenty years was not being ha happy with a fabric option. Um, I had put picture this plus is haunted with it and I was just going to stitch it on that. But then when I dyed this fabric, I was like, oh no, 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 no. This is definitively what these fairies need to go on. I think it's going to be amazing. So I'm hoping to work on that consistently. Um, I mean, Lord knows when it will be done, but hopefully it'll get some consistent prog progress. Um, some more, oh, my legs are aching. Sorry, I need to move. Um, more Teresa Wensler goodness. So I actually ordered this real cheap. I, I already had the pattern. Somebody was selling their started kit um, real inexpensively. And so I went ahead and ordered this. It just came like a week ago. I was organizing all the fabric right before Christmas. Or all the fabric, all the floss. Um, Teresa Wensler kits. I've had some people ask recently. I do love floss away bags. Um, for, it depends on what I'm stitching, but most often I go with floss away bags. Sometimes I use floss drops. It depends. Um, but for Teresa Wensler, I feel like floss away bags are the way to go. Um, so I just go through and I labeled all of them, you know, by number. And then these were on like really flimsy paper with hole punches like it was it came with with the kit like the manufacturer put the threads on some pretty flimsy paper um, with like the slots in them and I don't see those lasting very well so I just took everything out and put them in the floss away bags you see all the greens so much green so I haven't stitched on this yet but I will um I don't even know which fruit this is. Let's see if I can figure it out. She has one of the blocks started. Hmm. I have no idea which one <laughs> or which way is up. It could, I'll figure it out before I start stitching. Um, really long piece of fabric. And this is somebody else's stitching. She started more border there. Will I be able to figure it out from which way the leaves go? Nope, because it's lines. Are... I'll figure it out. Anyway, <laughs> I uh, saw an inexpensive Teresa Wensler that was already started, and I jumped at the chance. So that is something I will be working on as well. She was really nice, too. The seller, I think it was just eBay. She also threw in this kit, which is cute. Sorry, there's a sticker right over it. But like along the same vein, right? It's like similar look to it. That was nice. Keep everything together. 
this was the this is a um, Shiba Designs project bag. Um, you can get those on Etsy. She's got Etsy shop. She was our bag seller at um, the Queen City Stitch Retreat this past year. So I was kind of off camera. Um, ooh, I just really shook you guys. Sorry. Um, I put a few stitches in on this. This is my bootleg copy of My Lady's Chateau. I bought it thinking it was a legit kit because they had pictures of a legit kit in the listing. And then when it arrived, it clearly is not the legitimate dimensions kit. But I'm stitching it anyway because I bought it in good faith. And I will have to be more careful in future. Um, but anyway, I just put a few more stitches in on this. I don't often stitch in a hoop. Sometimes I'm just in the mood to, though. And so I've put this project in a hoop. And if I'm just like, I feel like picking up a hoop today, that's, this is what I usually pick up. Nothing too interesting to show there. This is the top left corner, so just sky and some trees. We'll see how it turns out. It's kind of an adventure because I don't know... The stitches aren't as complex as they would be in an actual dimensions kit, like in terms of how many strands and I, I'm, I'm just not sure, but um, kind of viewing it as a fun little adventure to see how it turns out. I'm still not buying another bootleg kit if I can help it. How am I doing on time, guys? I stopped it in there at one point, so I'm not sure where I am. Okay, this is, so this is my, if I had to pick one Teresa Wensler, this is the one. It is so stunning. Woodland Fairy, look at that fairy. And the little mouse, and the purple flowers. Oh, and the border, I'm sorry about the glare. Oh my goodness, the border is just, oh, those wings, the ferns in the background. I love this so much. This is my all time favorite Teresa Wensler but it's also particularly exhausting to work on. There's so, there's so little geometry in here, like regular geometry. Even for a Teresa Wensler, it is so confetti heavy and so difficult to like anticipate where you're going next with a stitch. Um, it's exhausting, it's exhausting to work on. So it is my favorite, but I am not rushing to get it done because I can only take so much at a time. But I did take this out, I think last month, and put some more stitches in on it. So this is where I am. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that far along. Um, what's on my needle? Oh yeah, it looks like I was working in here. I'm not that far along, but um, I'm not in a rush to get this done. When I feel like it fits my mood, I take it out, I put some stitches in, and try not to kind of guilt myself over not working on it more. Um, it's stunning, but again, it just, it takes so much focus and energy that um, I, I, I'm just gonna mess it up if I try to like force myself to work on it. And that I really don't want. Um, this kit, the Teresa Wensler kits, I think are wonderful, except they often come with too little fabric, in my opinion. This is one that came with fabric that only had like an inch and a half border or margin or something. And I was really not comfortable with that. So um, I replaced it with my own linen. Yeah, here you go. It'll get done one day. It, um, it will probably become a priority at some point. Um, to work on. My Teresa Wensler priority at the moment and for the last couple years has been Princess and the Dragon, which I have to show you in a few minutes. And I actually initially, I, a few, during pandemic 2020, I picked up Woodland Fairy and was like, I'm just, I'm going to do it. I love this piece. I'm going to do it. And I stuck with it for a couple of months and then realized I can't do this. <laughs> I can't focus even on that as like my soul or primary Teresa Wensler for long. It's just, it takes too much out of me. Um, I need to be able to jump around a bit more. So I also pulled this one out, which may become my Teresa Wensler priority when I'm done with Princess and the Dragon. Um, I've actually got quite a bit, 
quite a bit of this done, I'm going to say, but like with a great, take that with a grain of salt. For a Teresa Wensler of mine, I have quite a bit of this done. Um, that regular geometry around the edges makes it much easier to work on than a lot of them. This castle, castle sampler. This has already been washed. This is a piece that it was obvious the fabric was pretty grungy, and so I washed, washed it at one point. I got some thread hanging. But I've got a lot of, you know, the... Um, the borders of that like sketched in like those are the outside edges that bottom on the bottom left there is the bottom cornerstone of the design the letters in each of those blocks are one over one um this is a relatively simple Teresa Wensler and I love it it reminds me of a renaissance festival and we love renaissance festivals in this family so, yeah, this might, this might become a priority. I try to have one Therese Wensler that's my primary focus at a time. Um, this might be it once Princess and the Dragon is done. I was hoping to have Princess and the Dragon done by last Christmas. It wasn't. I was hoping to have it done by the end of this year. It's not. Can you get some from Logan? Okay. Thank you. Children. Oh, I'm almost done with projects. Um, okay, Princess and the Dragon. This is the one that I've been working on for a long time, probably as long as I've been doing floss tube. Um, well, I've been working longer than that, but you've probably been seeing it in, in some of my earliest floss tube videos. Oh, that glare is just stinky. Um, I made some good progress on it here in the last couple of months. I'm pretty happy with where it is. Ta-da! Um, last time I worked on it, I was doing a lot of border. I've done a couple of good border sessions recently. I actually even started backstitching because there's a backstitch line that goes along just the outside, and that's good mindless stitching. So I started that. I did, oh, I did a whole bunch of over one recently. Mm. I did a bunch of over one, oh, it's hard to see, in her face and her hand. Cover my face. <laughs> Kids in the background. Um, so I did some of her over one stitching. Um, lots of border stitching. What else have I done? I don't know. Oh, I've, I mean, in recent, I don't remember what I, what, where I was last time I showed this. But I've done quite a lot up here in like the hills and grass and I think I showed you guys that I had backstitched the castle and like finished that up so princess and the dragon working on it it's not completely full coverage <sighs> I really want to get it done I want to get it done long before the end of 2024 like maybe by summer I've been watching stitch and mommy Sarah she's been working on dragon ride um, and also hers is really close. Again, for Trace Wensler, it's really close to being done. Um, I've just been watching her and, um, really enjoying watching, like seeing her progress and it's kind of helping like push me on to do it. So I was going to start this last project I'm going to show you. I was going to start this for, on Christmas and then I didn't. <laughs> This is a Teresa Wensler kit, uh, Father Winter. Father Winter. Um, I believe this one is also in the Christmas. So she has a she has two fantasy fantasy collection books. She's got a sampler collection and a Christmas collection, and I think that's it, four books. And this one I believe is in the. It's probably in the Christmas collection. I was gonna say sampler collection probably in the Christmas collection. It's somewhere. Um, sorry, I'm not remembering well. Um, but I have this as a kit and I was planning on starting it on Christmas. I think it's beautiful. I broke, I love the process of like breaking down a kit and getting organized. I love it so much. I got all my fab, all my floss 
and labeled all my little Flossaway bags, got everything taken care of, and then I didn't do it. But I still think I might start it here sometime soon. Um, the uh, On Christmas, I actually got, I was having, like, my quilting bug was, like, through the roof. We are at our cabin, and I got it in my head to try to finish two quilt tops while we were there. And it didn't happen, but I came close. So I have two quilt tops that I'm hopefully going to be finishing here soon. Um, anyway, that's why that didn't get done. Okay. That's not, I brought up some things I didn't mean to. So, that's all my... Uh, projects that I was going to show today. Um, plans. I know especially this time of year people have all kinds of plans. I tend not to. The second I make a plan it's usually not going to happen. Um, the only plans I have are continuing with Chatelaine Wednesday and hopefully adhering to it better than I did the last part of this past year. Um, please keep tagging me in your Chatelaine Wednesday posts. I love when you guys do that. Um, because I like seeing what everybody else is doing. I know I don't get to put, to comment on everybody's um, post, but I am seeing them, especially if you tag me. I love that. Um, so please keep doing that if, if you if you want to. Um, I want to start doing the, I've been doing Mirror Monday, but I want to do it more consistently and start doing that like same project comes out every Monday until I get it done. I'd really like to work on that. Um, I'm me, so I could see myself maybe after a couple months being like, ugh, I need a break from this one. But even that would be awesome to get like a couple months worth of Mondays of progress in. I'm going to keep stitching on Lisa, on Lisa. I'm going to keep stitching with Lisa on Garden Beauty. So that'll keep happening. Um, that's actually been great while I'm busy with business and stuff. It's been really good to once a week know I'm going to sit down for a couple of hours and like that's a thing that's going to get done. Um, like guaranteed stitching time, making sure I'm actually sitting down and enjoying my hobby and not just working. Um, so I think that's important to continue. Um, a couple of things I want to show you real quick. First, my daughter really wants you to see her pin cushions. So my daughter's been working on hand sewing. She's really been enjoying just sewing by hand. She knows how to use a sewing machine, but she's like taken up hand sewing recently. Um, and she has some fabrics. She has like some charm packs and some mini charm packs and other things um, that I've either bought for her or gifted her for my stash. So we started with this one. We did this one together. She's just sewing two charm pack squares together. Um, and she has me sew up the, after she stuffs it, she has me, and she stuffed these with polyfill. After she, um, stitches them, she has had, or stuffs them, she has had me sew up the edge. She's made this one. And then these other three she did entirely on her own, other than the stitching up the, where the polyfill went in. She, um, but she did like the layering the fabrics. She's using sew tights to hold them together. It's really blown out. That's sort of better. Um, she's choosing her fabrics from her little stash. She's having a lot of fun with it. And of course I'm thrilled. <laughs> she's been having fun making stuff. I don't have it here with me because I put I set it up at my sewing table at the cabin. But for Christmas, she made me these little fabric flowers. And like they're in like a little box face. They're, they're beautiful. It was a really lovely Christmas present. Um, okay, so I've shown you those. <laughs> I have so much stuff in front of me. And I grabbed things I didn't even realize I was grabbing. Um, so Oak Crown Studios, uh, the website is, and now I'm going to like pitch my product. Okay, <laughs> so if you don't want to hear that, you're welcome to move on to the next video. Hopefully I will be back soon. Um, my plans are basically to just keep stitching as much as I can and enjoying it as much as I can. Um, so Oak Crown Studios, uh, I've posted a couple quick updates. It ha I have an Instagram account for Oak Crown Studios. Um, on Instagram, I'm trying to keep as much as possible the Oak Crown Studio like news to the Oak Crown Studios Instagram account. 
um, so that if you're not interested and you're just following me as a stitcher and you just want to see my projects, you could just follow Fiber Arts Amy and not worry about it. But if you want to see like business updates and website updates, then you should uh, go ahead and follow Oak Crown Studios as well. I'll try to remember to link that below. Um, I brought up a couple fabrics. Um, I wanted to show, it's almost the end of the month. Everybody should have their December fabric of the month. If for some reason you don't have your December fabric of the month yet, look away, okay? Um, or look away in a few minutes. Um, I've had a lot of questions about November. Well, okay, clear up a couple of things. One, the fabric of the month is sold a month in advance. So if you sign up by the end of December, you're paying for January's fabric of the month. If you sign up in January, you're paying for February's fabric of the month. That's because I need time in order to dye the fabric. Um, possibly to source the fabric, right? Like just to make sure I have it in-house, dye it and get it out. Um, if you order something at the end of the month, I don't have time to, to actually make it and get it to you because everything is dyed to order unless I happen to have something on hand. Um, so the first fabric of the month was Firefly, which I showed you my whip on Firefly. Now, because of how Firefly is dyed, there is more variation in it than in a lot of my fabrics um, to get the starburst effect. There's a little more variation than, than in some of them. But um, this is a Firefly on 32 count linen. It's so pretty. Yeah, 32 count. So, so pretty. So this was um, November's fabric for the month. And I've added it to the website. There's not a picture on the website yet because I need to get off my behind and take a picture of these fabrics I'm showing you. Um, normally I scan my fabrics in to get the most accurate image I can for the website. And I will like color correct them and stuff if I can, if I need to, to try to get them as close as possible. Um, but Firefly is too big for the scanner. I'm gonna need to decide, I might need to do just like an image of a quarter of it. I don't know, I'm gonna have to figure that out. So it dyes quite differently on Lugana. And I know why it does, but you might not be interested in why. Um, Lugana, you're more likely to end up with this like blue um, sort of starburst coming off of it, this kind of dark blue starburst. Um, the fab, the dye pools and um, wicks through the fabric very differently on Lugana. Now Lugana is always going to be lighter than linen, um, but also for this one, because of the the way the dye works in the process that I'm using, you're likely to end up with this kind of blue, which I still think looks amazing, but you're de it definitely looks a bit different. Um, than on the linen. And here just to show you them next to each other in terms of color, right? Like there's a distinct difference. Um, and on the website, it's gonna be a long process of me getting, so images on the website, if you click on Lugana, like 32 Lugana, for example, you should be able to tell if the picture changes to a Lugana. Okay, so like I, I've matched images to fabric types. Um, I don't have a picture on every substrate for every color yet. It will happen. I have a list of what to dye for that, but it's not there yet. Um, but anyway, co uh, color difference. Lugana is always going to be a lot lighter than the linen. And then this is, this is Ada. Ada is usually the same or a little bit lighter than the linen. Um, what I, the, this, again, this is Firefly on Ada. This is a 16 count Ada. Yep. Um, the best way I can describe what happens with Ada is that it's blotchier. You're more likely to get more distinct markings between the colors on an Ada. But this is, this is Firefly on Ada and it's so good. And if you do want to use it for Firefly Fairies, um, a fat quarter of any one of these is big enough to stitch the Firefly Fairies on. So, I'm so excited. 
they just turned out so great. I was really thrilled. Um, I know a lot of people out there, sorry to shake you. A lot of people out there were really thrilled with their fabrics. And so it just made me feel happy. It's hard. It's hard to like put something you've made out into the world, right? And like hope it's well received. Um, and I know everyone's not always going to be happy, but I just appreciate the overwhelmingly positive response I've gotten so far. So my um, uh, inspiration for the November fabric of the month, which again, I already put on the website, that was definitely Firefly Fairies from Lavender and Lace. Um, for my December fabric of the month, my inspiration was mermaids. Absolutely mermaids. I always include a little blurb um, with the fabric of the month shipments explaining like what I would stitch on it um, in case you want that or like you know what my inspiration is. But this is called seaweed. And again in person it's just a bit more blended. It's not quite so blotchy and stark. Um, it's mostly greens with a little bit of blue. I feel like this is the best color represent representation of it. But again in person it looks a it's smoother not as blotchy I feel like the camera always makes things look like blotchier and more contrasty than they are in real life um, so this is seaweed on 32 count linen and and actually one of, this is the same on 28 count linen so one of the things that I thought was it what would look good on this is actually autumn town from autumn lane stitchery because autumn lane stitchery is coming to do our um, retreat in October uh, and that was one as soon as I had dyed this, I was like, ooh, Autumn Town would look awesome on that. Um, this is seaweed. And seaweed's not on the website yet, but it will be. All of my fabrics of the month will be released, um, but there will be a delay. And I'm not going to guarantee any specific delay. It Sometimes it might be a month, sometimes it might be six months. Um... I'll go through periodically and load them on, but I want people who are in the Fabric of the Month Club to get first crack at these fabrics. So this is Seaweed on Lugana. Again, just to show you the difference, right? That's linen here, and this is the same on Lugana. It's still beautiful, absolutely beautiful, um, but much softer. If you don't have like a functional preference of linen versus Lugana for what you prefer to stitch on, stitch on like if you like both, but you know you either prefer brighter, bolder fabrics, or you know you prefer softer, more muted, maybe more subtle fabrics. That's something to keep in mind too for any company and any you know fabric club that you're in. Uh, if you're more of a more of a bright and bold, Maggie, aka Kitchy Whips kind of person, <laughs> linen or Ada may be your way to go. If you're a more subtle sort of person, Lugana may be the way to go. Um, and then this is seaweed. Oh my gosh, I have a bunch of it up here. I'll show you this one. This is seaweed on um, 16 count Ada. 16, right? Let me look. Yes. So Ada in particular, all of them will die differently based on count as well. Um, but just for example, this is 18 count Ada and this is 16 count Ada. And it's not a drastic difference. There's a difference. Does anyone else see a Grinch? I see two Grinch eyes and his finger up by his mouth plotting the demise of Whoville down below. Does anyone else see that Grinch in my fabric there? Is that just me? Anyway, so that's 18 count, 16 count of seaweed. And there's um all three. I did also add a um, opalescent option to my fabric of the month. If you ever see something, or excuse me, don't see something, an option on the website that you would like, please just let me know. Um, I can almost always add it or make it work for you. Um, there's a lot I want to do with Oak Crown. Um, time is just a factor, right? Like I can only do so much in a day. And um, sometimes if you request something, 
that that spurs that, that'll move that item to the top of my list and and get it done sooner and I know as soon as I added opalescent I got a bunch of people signing up for the opalescent um, fabric club so clearly there are people out and I did that because somebody specifically emailed me and asked and so I put it up on the website and it's there um, I'm gonna show you these just because they're here <laughs> I brought them up by accident um, this is lurking in the woods on um, count 16 I think Nope, 18. 18 count Ada lurking in the woods. And that's not anyone's order. It was just dyed. I dyed an extra. And 28 count linen rain is coming. I love this one. I love them all. Who am I kidding? Not just my fabrics. Everyone's fabrics. Fabrics, it's like, it's like another ingredient, right? Like it's just one more amazing component of what you're creating that can be so inspiring and wonderful so this is linen rain is coming so i think that's it and now i have some editing to do thanks camera and um a lot of cleaning up to do because big old stack of project bags i don't know if i showed you anything i shouldn't um I've got some stitching up there. I don't even know where that fairy pattern came from. Actually, I know it came from Patterns Online, but I have no idea who the designer is. That's a print of the map from Labyrinth that my husband gave me, either for Christmas last year or my birthday. That's Nora Corbett's Sunflower Fairy. There's, uh, I'm taking you on a tour for like no apparent reason other than I feel like it. Um, that is, um, April's Blue Diamond from Marabilia. There's stacks of books that I haven't gotten around to reading. There's a whole lot of clay by Kim. <laughs> oh, and up there is, uh, oh, there's more clay by Kim. Up there is um, a castle sampler from Dragon Dreams up near the top of my ceiling. Hope y'all enjoyed that little tour. I'm not gonna get the camera back where it was. Okay, it's so good to have done this finally again. <laughs> it's been way too long. Hopefully I can get this edited and up ASAP so you guys can see it and hopefully there will be space on my phone to do that. Anyway, it's great to be back. I hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season and I will see you soon. Bye.